Number one, electrolysis of aluminum oxide. Now, aluminum oxide on its own has a high melting point. So, for electrolysis, we actually add a cryolite to lower down the melting point so that we use less energy. So, that's the purpose of cryolite. Number two, which nitrogen atom has greatest change in oxidation number? Now, they want the greatest change. So, once you have figure out all the oxidation numbers of the nitrogen, you have to compare the, the change as it goes from one to the other. Minus three, going to plus two, actually need to increase by five units. So, increase by five, plus four, to plus five only increases by one. Option C, we increase by two. D, we can either increase by three or decrease by two. So the greatest change is actually A, right? a change of 5 units. Number 3, we have a reduction and oxidation and we need to find out what are the ratio of the species that the iodate and the iodine actually reacts in. Now before we can actually combine the two equations together, we must make sure that the same number of electrons are exchanged. So we have 4 here and 2 here. We have to multiply the bottom equation throughout by 2. So makes it 4, 4, 8, and importantly, the other species of iodine is 2. Now we have both electrons to be the same number. We can actually combine them together or we can compare. One more will react with 2 moles of I2. So that's the ratio that they will react. Number four, which species contain the same number of electrons? The answer is C, sodium, magnesium 2 plus, or sodium plus, magnesium 2 plus, aluminum, aluminum 3 plus, all have 10 electrons after they lose 1, 2, and 3 electrons respectively. So you can check your data booklet for the number of electrons they have and then take away the electrons to get the charges. Okay. You, should all, you should get 10 electrons for all of them. Number 5, autolytic autocatalytic reaction actually means it produces a substance that actually speeds up the reaction it produces a catalyst during the reaction itself so what curve represent the rate of reaction at the start the rate will be zero because we don't have any catalyst it will be pretty slow but then as we get the catalyst produced it actually speeds up the reaction and it actually hits the maximum during somewhere in the middle. Why does it go down then, since we have more and more catalysts? Because don't forget, we are using up our reactants. So even though we have a lot of catalysts coming out, our reactants are being used up, so the rate of reaction has to go back to zero. A Boltzmann distribution curve. We have four options to choose from. Which one represents the minus 20 degrees and minus 10 degrees? Just a general idea. We have two curves. The one that has a higher peak and the peak is located naturally on the left side. That will represent the lower temperature. If the peak is to the right, naturally it will be lower down. That represents the higher temperature. So we can compare and see which of these makes sense for the four options. Solid line represents minus 20. So this will be the colder line, lower temperature. It should be on the left side. Okay, the peak will be on the left. And then this is a higher temperature, the peak will be on the right. 
be careful they are negative values so solid line on the left dotted line on the right and the levels of the peak are correct so number seven free radical substitution which one has the lowest activation energy now for a what actually has to happen at the first instance will be we have to break up the chlorine chlorine bond for b there's no bond with no, no bond breaking um, occurring rather it's bond forming so the activation energy of these two free radicals reacting they are very reactive so the activation energy will be the lowest for c there's still bond breaking of your ch bond and d we also have to break the cl cl bond right? if all four options are bond break involves bond breaking then you have to check your data booklet and see which one requires the least amount of bond energy now for here we have bond forming for the starting part that will require the less energy or the least energy number eight we have different gases or different atmosphere they want us to find out the greatest density now we have different percentages how do we find out the average what we say the average molecular mass I'll take D as the example we have hydrogen that's 82.5 percent so 0.825 multiplied by MR of hydrogen there'll be 2 then we take all the weighted average helium 15 percent multiplied by helium's MR and then methane 0. 0, 0.023 multiplied by methane's MR 16 so all these percentages and their weighted average we can tally them up we will get the average MR Point eight two five times 2 plus point one five two times 4 plus point zero two three times 16 so the average MR is about or the weighted MR is about 2.626 for the planet of Uranus you do the same for the other options and pick the one that has the highest number that will be the one that's the greatest density right in this case I'll just show you the example for D which will turn out to be the highest number